Hello my beautiful friends, it's Mimi here today and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I overcame depression and anxiety. I know it sounds like a very serious subject and it actually is, um, but I'll try to make it light and I'll try to highlight the things that really help me heal myself. Anxiety and depression is something, specifically anxiety, something that I experienced throughout my life. So I have a lot to say on the subject because I've done a lot of research and I'm just really excited to share the story with you guys because it took me a long time to get to a place where I feel comfortable to share this publicly. I've mentioned this in some of my videos, in some of the vlogs or talking videos, like here and there, little bits and pieces, but I never did sort of a sit down video to go more into depth on the subject. And I felt like it's been a long time coming for me because like I said, there's lots I would love to share with you guys. Okay, there's so much to say, but um, I just want to start off by saying that one thing to keep in mind is of course that I'm not a doctor, I'm just a human being and everything I will share with you today is my personal experience in my own search for well-being and happiness. So I would definitely urge you not to take my advice actually, to listen to my advice if you're interested of course, but always in this matter or any other matter, always go out and do your research. That's what I do when I find anything interesting. I do my own research and then you can make educated decisions on how you would like to proceed in life, how you'd like to help yourself, or anything like that. So I think that's an important thing to mention in this video because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm just a human being who had an issue and looked out and found different ways to help themselves. So let's get started. Where do I begin? I guess I'll just begin from the very beginning. This video might be a bit long and it might get emotional at times, so I just wanna give it out there, you know, I'll warn you right now. Again, this is a very personal story for me to share in it. It did take me a long time to come to a place where I can share it with you, but I feel like we're at a point in our relationship where I feel very, very comfortable. And I I think one of the biggest, um, something that I realized recently is one of the biggest values that we have as human beings is to share our story in an honest, authentic way. And I think one, A, you accept yourself when you do that. You don't need to pretend to be cool. You don't, you don't need to pretend to be somebody you're not. And it's just something that I believe you learn as you grow through life and um, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience to be in that place. I'm just really grateful to feel this way and to feel comfortable and empowered to share this message that I'm about to share with you. Like I mentioned in the intro of this video, anxiety is something that I've experienced for most of my life. I will try not to focus on why too much. I know when you're experiencing depression and anxiety, the question why is such a big question in your head. You tend to ask yourself things like, why am I going through this? Why me? Why is this happening? Why, 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 why? But when you look at the word why, it doesn't really solve any issues, does it? It just makes you focus on the problem. So it's just something that took me, um, you know, years to become aware and realize that there's no point to keep asking why. I think why is important and you definitely unleash the why as you you shift the focus from why to how. So the biggest difference that I've noticed in my own attitude and mindset is when I switch from why to how. How can I help myself get better? It just totally shifts your, your perspective and your focus. So when I shifted to how, I, I, I found many different solutions. But again, I'm gonna go back to the story and just explain my experience because if you have gone through anxiety, panic attacks, existential panic attacks, depression, you will relate to this and perhaps it'll make you feel normal because when I certainly was going through it, I felt like I was weird, something is wrong with me, this will never go away, like I'm doomed and everything like that. So like I said, you know, why? I don't know why. There could be many reasons why I was experiencing anxiety for most of my life. It was never severe, it was just kind of like general anxiety and fear. But um, one of the whys I think is, you know, can be traumas. I'm gonna talk about it later in, in this video and I'm gonna recommend a great book. So childhood trauma, or any kind of trauma that has happened to you could lead to depression, anxiety, and a bouquet of these conditions. I'm smiling saying all these nows, but of course, it's very painful, it's very real. Mental disease is very, very real. It's a big epidemic right now, especially in all of the developed countries, like in North America, I mean, the rest of the world as well, but specifically where I used to live, basically, in Canada. Oddly enough, my depression and anxiety, I mean, when I started feeling depressed and anxious, <laughs> the worst, you know, 
know, like the pinnacle moment was right almost right after I got married. So if you looked at my life from the outside, everything was perfect in my life at the time. Not perfect, but I mean, it looked great. I'm young. I just got married to a wonderful human being. We're happy. We just started a business and it was doing really great almost from the start. So my financial uh, worries were sort of covered almost right away. As soon as we started the business, we were making money. We were profitable. Um, I have friends. I mean, even one of the things that I've always dreamt about is traveling was also now available because we were able to afford it financially because we started a business. So, you know, a few months after we got married, we're in South of France. Again, from the outside, my life looks great, but internally I'm extremely depressed, anxious, and I have panic attacks all the freaking time. You know, sharing this now makes me aware that actually a lot of my friends and a lot of people out there that know me personally don't know the story. So this is probably gonna be interesting even for people that do know me personally to watch this video, to know more about, you know, when you look at somebody's life from the outside and you think, Oh, her life must be great. Like she's got no problems. Like we all deal with some issues and problems. I'm getting emotional right now. I warned you. <laughs> I might get emotional in certain parts of this video. You know, just to put it in perspective, you know, there were there were times when I was going through the worst of depression where I would be sitting on the floor and like literally like no desire to live, no desire to eat, complete apathy and just like pulling myself to get up and eat something because I haven't had any food. It's a crazy experience. It, it's hard to talk about it because obviously it makes you like relieve the moment again, but I think it's important because I believe a lot of you who are watching, if you have, if you know somebody who's going through depression, it can help you better relate and have empathy with them. People don't make these things up. Like depression is real. When you're depressed, your whole world is so black. I remember this moment where I even questioned if I was ever happy. That's how crazy depression depression can be like I was thinking to myself oh my god I think I was always depressed I don't think I was ever happy like I remember this moment and actually believing that because that's what happens to you when you're depressed you just like it's a, like a black cloud and a black hole and that's what people have to go through who are going through depression it's a very scary very unpleasant experience now on top of that <laughs> I was feeling very anxious and I would have all these panic attacks and anxiety attacks all the time and you know all this happened during that trip you know in south of France it kind of got worse. I was reading all these books, all self-help books and all these things just to try to figure out and understand what was happening to me. Then we came back to Canada and again I was, uh, was researching and trying to understand what is happening with me, what's going on and constantly having these you know anxiety attacks and panic attacks and all of that. You know it started to affect my life. It kind of happened slowly but then when I looked back I realized how much it affected me. A I stopped going out as much. I started saying no to things and I usually would be such an outgoing person like I'm an extrovert by nature I love being outside I love being with people but I would stay home more I slowly started developing social anxiety so if I was out in a restaurant I would feel like oh my god what if I'm gonna have panic attack what if people are gonna like judge me or like what if people are gonna think I'm weird no I can't go there all of these things made me feel very aware and also I started resenting going to like elevators um, going to condos because I felt again if I'm like on a high floor like in a high-rise building and there's no balcony or window and I have a panic panic attack because when you have a panic attack you feel like you're dying like it's, it's really scary again like I can talk about it with a smile guys because I've lived through it I've gone through it and it's amazing to be on the other side but in the moment you actually think you're dying like I once even went to the hospital because I thought I was having a heart attack and they looked at me and they're like no you're not it's just you know panic or whatever so anyways it started affecting my life in many you know negative ways for example every time I had to question myself about where I was going and if I was comfortable in that space in case it made me feel anxious and then I guess the tipping point the the hardest thing that was for me to accept when I was going through the depression and anxiety was when I realized that slowly with this depression and anxiety I developed this fear of flying because I realized oh my god I'm in this enclosed space in the plane if I have a panic attack I can't get out what am I gonna do and I started you know saying no to all these opportunities and trips that I could go on and for me traveling is like my life you know I love the idea not the idea I love the experience of, of going to faraway places it makes me understand myself it makes me understand the world to me it's like my blood it's like some people just have it in them 
happen. And for me, that was like a death sentence. When I realized that this panic, anxiety, depression is causing this part of my life, I knew that I just have, I mean, that was just the tipping point. Of course, there was many other things. It was affecting all of my relationships. And I mean, the main one is the one I had with myself. So once that happened, I realized I need to deal with it. One of the first things that I did when I wanted to get help is I went to my GP because I thought that's what you do when you have a problem. And GP is basically a family doctor. So she looked at me and she just listened to me and and then that was like a five minute appointment. She wrote down some prescription to antidepressant medicine and she handed it over to me. I picked it up and I looked at her like, what? Like, are you crazy? Like, but this is not, we don't know the root of the problem. That's not a solution. I was at the time, I was 23, 24 years old. And I just said, if I start taking this now, what's gonna happen to me later? I'm so young. I can't believe this is the solution you're giving me. And she said, well, if you wanna find a solution, you go look for it, but this is what I suggest. For me, pills are never the right answer because A, I don't trust substances that I don't know what's in them. I don't like uh, mind altering things. And um, although I believe that antidepressants can be very helpful in certain situations and you should always, you know, trust yourself when you make that decision whether you're gonna take medicine or not. In my situation, in my case, that was not an option because I just don't like taking medicine. I don't believe in it. So I just tossed it out. I was like, I know that option is not gonna work for me. Next thing I did is I went to see the shrink that was recommended to me basically shrink as a psychologist psychiatrist I never know which one does the, the right thing but anyways you go to them and they talk to you and they try to unravel uh, what you're going through wonderful people shrink is, could be very helpful especially if you don't have somebody in your life who you can share with um, I went to quite a few appointments actually and I would talk about my life and I just felt like I was on this TV show where I'm this you know person with big problems where in fact I felt like I didn't have any problems and I just sat there dwelling in my own life and past experiences and I just didn't feel like it helped me at all. So I, I stopped going there. What I tried also was sort of an anxiety group. So people with anxiety get together. And again, it's, it's wonderful. It can be very helpful. If you're struggling alone, and I was, being in this group can make you feel normal, that you're not alone. And I went to one or two or three of them, but then I realized like I wasn't really going out at that point in my life. Like I was just like basically at home working. That was the time when we just started making videos. The work part was fine. I was able to pull myself out of depression and anxiety just for that one one or two hours while I was filming the video. It gave me life and it gave me purpose to live actually in the moment. I'm very grateful for YouTube and you guys who have been watching me for from the beginning. Uh, many of you might not even be aware that some of those videos that I filmed were like in the darkest moments of my life. Yeah, so, you know, I would work most of the day at home in front of the computer and then I would go to these meetings with other people who are just as anxious and panicky as me. And I just realized it's not a way for me to heal because if all people that I'm hanging out are people who have this problem, them, then I felt like it was dragging me back into the hole. So I said that I need to be surrounded by more people who are actually not feeling this way, who can pull me out of it. Interestingly enough, when I was going through depression and anxiety, a lot of my friends sort of disappeared. I felt like at the time I had a lot of friends who um, looked to me to be sort of the leader to like make all the arrangements and be like, hey, let's go here or there. So when I wasn't in, in the state of mind where I was like excited enough to go out, they just never offered to go out or like they just kind of, I guess for them it was a scary experience because it's not the Mimi they knew. So I can understand how that was. But and at the time I felt very lonely. Um, Alex was... <laughs> you have a tissue. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm getting so emotional. When I said Alex, I'm just like tears. I was like, I was not expected to get emotional at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to talk about it because I feel a lot of love and a lot of gratefulness. Gosh, give me a moment. <laughs> Give me a moment to regain my composure, but Alex has been a wonderful, wonderful anchor in, in this experience. And I'm crying, but it's happy tears, I trust me. It's wonderful happy tears because he was really there for me and he was like, hey, snap out of it. Like, you're fine, it's just an experience. And it was just an experience. I believe that depression and anxiety are very important signals that your body is sending you to make you become aware that you need to deal with something. You need to face something. You need to acknowledge something. You need to change something. 
something and you know you can numb it by taking pills alcohol drugs but the truth is if you want to heal you have to face it and you know in your search for facing it you will find many different solutions and I will share with you the ones that work for me the best of course like I read countless self-help books I went to see so many different people Reiki um, hypnosis <laughs> all kinds of things but I'm not gonna obviously tell you all of it because it's just gonna take hours so I'll just focus on what really helped me so one of the biggest things that has helped me and I will focus on that mainly is um, Vipassana meditation you guys know I've, I've talked about it many different times in many different videos I'm really excited to actually talk about it in more depth and the reason I never talked about it in more depth before any of these things that I will mention in today's video as solutions to depression and anxiety is because when I felt like I healed myself when I was on the other side of the depression and anxiety I was very excited and I thought oh my god I should just this was like four years ago you know three and a half four years ago I was like oh my god I should just make video and tell everyone about how to heal themselves and then I thought Mimi just don't rush let time show you if you actually got better and then years later if you still feel great then you can share it and it's gonna be so much more powerful because in the spur of a moment you can feel sometimes hey something helped you but is this actually consistent and lasting and now years later you know I feel great I feel full of life if anything you know I feel like there's not enough hours in the day to live and I'm just very grateful to be here so um, Vipassana meditation is something that was recommended to me by several people again I look at meditation from a very logical point of view I look at a lot of things from a very logical point of view I need to understand things with my brain and accept them of course with my heart so with meditation it is scientifically proven now and again don't just trust me do your own research I'm gonna actually link a great article about meditation in the info box below I feel like I'm talking so fast because I want to share so many things basically meditation allows you to go into a parasympathetic system which is where you go when you're sleeping so when you're meditating you are actually it's it's proven scientifically that you're healing so your heart rate goes down it slows down uh, which again allows you to heal it significantly positively impacts your immune system it is the best thing you can do for yourself it's the most wonderful mental practice that you can do but basically I knew that meditation was great but I was terrified especially when you're going through anxiety and panic attacks the thought of being alone in a meditation retreat for 10 days not speaking to anyone and not being able to distract yourself with the phone is terrifying Terrifying. So for me that I resented that experience for a very long time and then when I really got to the bottom Like it was the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the black hole I said, okay, well, I have to somehow help myself and this was sort of all the arrows were pointing in the direction of meditation So and Alex's sister one of was one of the biggest um, Inspirations for me to do it because she helped heal her insomnia with Vipassana meditation Finally on a side note actually I went to Vipassana years before that um, but I was kind of like recreationally thought I would try Try meditation and I ran away on day three because it's so freaking hard guys it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life so now you know fast forward three years I'm going through this depression anxiety I go back they accept me back and you know what I knew what I was getting myself into I wasn't expecting it to be easy the first time I went into the meditation retreat I was under the impression like I got this this is gonna be so easy but guys it's like mental boot camp you know those marathons like Iron Man like you bike and then you swim and then you run that's exactly what you do but you do it in your mind and I mean there's so many things I'd love to share about meditation I'll just say that Vipassana is not a religion it's not a sect or anything anyone can join it from any religion or no religion doesn't really matter basically it's a place where you go to learn to meditate it's free to attend if you finish 10 day course you can donate money you can donate anything that you can afford to donate which I think is wonderful I was very skeptical about any other meditation retreats especially if they require you to pay so the fact that it was free I was like okay I can trust these guys and it's wonderful you get fed you have a room you either by yourself or you share a room with someone and yeah for 10 days you're just there to learn this technique of how to meditate and it's just a very basic simple technique where you observe your breath um, without altering it so you're not trying to de breathe deeper or do anything you're just observing what is and again it's the most powerful thing you can teach yourself they're already doing a lot of studies on this in schools here in the UK and I'm sure in the States as well where they're teaching students how to meditate they're teaching patients and hospitals how to meditate because it allows you to endure pain it, it allows you to live in a different state and mainly it just allows you to connect to yourself and connect to your heart and know your ultimate purpose of why you're here I honestly should probably do a separate 
separate video on that because that would take a whole day talking about meditation That's how passionate I am about it. I went for it and I did it and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life I didn't think I could do it. I honestly thought guys I honestly thought I would die like I thought I couldn't do it because there's just no way I could be alone for that long and um, Go through that experience, but I did it and I'm very very proud of myself and it was like night and day going to meditation I was terrified of everything. It was like the peak of my depression and anxiety and then and coming out of it, Alex was in Costa Rica and I had to take a flight by myself from Toronto to Miami and then from Miami to I think San Juan, uh, Costa Rica, which is like a long flight. It was like three and a half hours to Miami and then another four or five hours. And I was like, oh my God. So this is the ultimate test if meditation works. And I was completely fine. And after that, it was just night and day. It's just every time, it's not that after meditation or after you've learned meditation, it's not like you don't experience feelings, but when you experience them, you don't attach yourself to the experience the way you did before and that's what meditation ultimately teaches you it teaches you to be non-reactive it teaches you to be observant it's a completely different state it's kind of hard to explain it in words I just urge you whether you're going through depression or not to start meditating even if you're not going to a meditation retreat just to start doing it in your day like 10-15 minutes can be extremely great what's the app Alex? Headspace. So you can start with an app like Headspace for example Alex I've never been to a treat yet he wants to go one day but Headspace is one because you can start with I think as short as five to ten minutes and then slowly increase the meditation time again it's the best mental exercise you can do for quieting the crazy wild monkey that is our mind in the world and the culture that we live now which is all about technology and we're on our phones and computers and this and that it like totally screws up with our brain we don't want to realize how bad it is so when you meditate you kind of just create that tranquility and peace and calm within yourself can you tell how excited I am all right so I'll say this was number one thing that helped me overcome and heal through my depression and anxiety this was the most significant out of all the things and I think mainly it's because I just learned to watch the anxiety or the panic without reacting to it and the less I reacted to it the less I attached to it and the more I alive I felt it's the best way I can describe it into words one last thing I want to mention about meditation and the reason I want to mention this is because I believe this is the biggest mis misconception about meditation is that meditation is not this relaxing thing that you do and I think that's why many people don't start meditating because they don't feel like they're doing it right they're like oh my god I'm thinking too much I might be doing this wrong this is not working out and then they quit but in fact meditation it's this exercise of the mind that you do it's basically an intense focus on your breathing and there's many different meditations out there obviously I don't know all of them the reason I really love Vipassana is because in Vipassana meditation you focus on what is you're not inventing um, you're not pretending you're somewhere you're not visualizing anything you just focus on the breath breath is here breath is real that's one thing that's always there until the day we die <laughs> you know so that's one constant thing that you can focus on is sort of an anchor and you observe your breath without trying to alter it so you just observe reality and then anytime your mind wanders off you bring it back again I'm not gonna teach you the technique here because it's more complex than that but basically it's very logical simple exercise that anyone can do it's a very scientific and it's a very logical practice that anyone can understand and do and Another thing that I guess I should have started with but because I was so excited about meditation I didn't start with this one I think the most important thing when you're going through depression anxiety panic attacks is to share with people and I know for somebody like myself it's hard to share because some of us feel like we need to be strong and we need to sh show to the world that we got it we've got everything under control but the truth is when you're suffering inside you're not really helping yourself and you're not helping your family or friends because they don't know what's going on inside of you they cannot just guess what's going on so you need to learn to share and express your emotions and feelings and you know what half of the time when you do that you feel like a hundred times better like I said the reason even I went to meditation is because I got myself to share with the Alex's sister and when I told her how I was feeling she said I know how you're feeling I've gone through this this is gonna help you but again if I didn't share I wouldn't have gotten that insight so it's so important to share I know it's not easy to share with everyone so find somebody that you feel you can trust find somebody that you you think will not judge you if you don't have these kind of people in your life then go seek more medical attention go see a doctor call a helpline I think it's very important that we share and express it's okay to feel emotions it's okay to go through depression and anxiety it's part of human experience I think part of the reason why depression has become such an epidemic in the Western world is because
because we look down at people who go through it we think um that oh it's wrong like it's a taboo to talk about it and nobody talks about it everyone's just suffering inside when in reality if you talk to anyone in europe and you say like how like well, how are you doing they'll be like i'm feeling terrible <laughs> like it's normal here to tell people that you're not feeling great and you know what because they're sharing how they're feeling constantly they don't build up a worse state of that experience you know sometimes when you share you're not feeling well it kind of passes through you and it doesn't evolve and amplify into something worse i think that's a very important part is to share what you're going through with someone with everyone if you can just the act of sharing can be extremely healing because so many people will be able to relate to you that's partly why i'm sharing here now it took a lot of courage for me to sit here and talk about what I've experienced. Again, it was very painful, emotional experience of my life, but I know that so many of you will relate to this and will be like, great, like I can feel so much better about myself because Mimi has felt that way too. So yes, I have, <laughs> now you know. Definitely share, share and don't be afraid to share with other people. We're all humans, we all have emotions. The goal is not to feel always happy. You know, there's no such thing as happiness. Life is an emotional journey. You have ups and downs and it's okay to be low because it teaches you huge important lessons you know my low times have taught me that a money doesn't bring you happiness that friendships and relationships are the most important thing in your life and that community is so important and that sort of leads to that the reason depression and anxiety has become such an epidemic is because we live in a world where we're all so isolated even though we live in these big cities with millions of people we feel so isolated all we are doing like you know look around yourself you'll see people sitting on their phones completely isolated with the phones. The sense of community has vanished from many big cities. That's part of the problem, to be honest, is the fact that we don't share, we don't have community. So another thing that really helped me is to create a little community. It doesn't have to be huge, but have a few friends that you can confine and that you can talk to. It's something that I'm constantly working on because you know you move through life, some people sort of fall apart from your life and then you meet new people, but it, it's important that you have a few people, your teeny tiny or maybe big community that you can go to for anything and the people can come to you as well and that can be a very mutually healing experience. Yoga is another a big part of my life. It played a huge role in my healing process. When I was going through the lowest of the low, I remember my mom actually suggesting that I would sign up to yoga classes and her friend was a teacher and it was great so my mom and I would go to semi-private classes with her friend and it was wonderful you know because when you're depressed or anxious you spend a lot of time like this like your posture is slouched and the more depressed you are the more slouched you are and sort of like you hide yourself in yoga it's the opposite you do all of these poses where you open your body and you stretch it just made me feel so good at least in that one hour it got me out of that state and I really believe that it made a huge difference in in the way I felt and I, I still practice yoga every single day or every other day um, with Alex we do a small practice of sun salutation where you stretch the body you go into different poses you can google how to do that I think yoga is something that everyone has to practice again in the time and day that we live now hours and hours of our day um, in front of a computer or slouch in front of the phone and yoga is helpful not only for people who deal with anxiety and depression but also for everyone else as well. It teaches you how to focus on your breathing, how to deep slower and deeper, how to do all these postures who sort of massage your body from the inside. That's how amazing it is. Again, I can talk about this for hours, but I'll just say that yoga is amazing and it's definitely a must for anyone who's going through depression and anxiety. With anything that I mentioned in today's video, like yoga, meditation, or anything else that I'll mention further in the video, the most important thing if you want to see sustainable results is consistency. You cannot go to a retreat and wish that you're gonna get better. It's the same thing like going to the gym for 10 days, seeing some muscles and strength and then being like, I'm good now, I don't need to work out. It doesn't work this way. If you wanna see sustainable results, you have to do consistent work. That's the biggest lessons I've learned through this experience because after the first meditation retreat, for example, you know, I stopped practicing meditation because I was like, I'm good now, I don't need this. And then in about a, a year or so, I started feeling a little down and I was like, okay, I need to go back. So I went back to the meditation retreat, but after that retreat, I realized, no, this is not gonna work. I need to actually start practicing this daily. That's how you actually get better, is to do something daily, just like you brush your teeth because you don't want your teeth to rot 
want it. Just like you exercise, just like you eat healthy, you need to do it daily to see consistent results or to see any kind of results. Now I'm gonna mention a few books that were extremely helpful in my healing and in my understanding of what I was going through. I read countless of books, self-help books mainly. The three books that I'm gonna mention right now and in no particular order, I'll start with, I'm just looking at my notes here, the, the Ultramind Solution was probably one of the most comprehensive. It's written by doctors, very scientifically based. I really love the fact that it was scientifically based because again, like I said, I like to understand and I like some research to be there. The book teaches you, I mean, I read it years ago, but it basically teaches you how food and your environment affects your gut and gut, in fact, your stomach, basically. Um, it's sort of a, like a second brain in your body. This is the first brain and this is the second brain. It is directly connected to your brain. So anything that affects the gut, affects the brain and that's what the book talks about and for that reason actually um, and then of course through other research and other naturopathic doctors that I've met I made a decision to go sugar-free gluten-free and dairy-free now when I say sugar-free dairy-free or gluten-free doesn't mean that I don't have any I really want to be clear here for example sugar I just don't have processed sugar I still have some honey very rarely um, I have some maple syrup I have some coconut nectar so I still eat sweet things I still bake with you know all of those um, ingredients. When I say gluten, I don't eat processed gluten. I don't eat pasta or breads. But if I'm in Italy or if I'm here in the UK sometimes and I'm in a rush restaurant and there's a really nice sourdough bread, if I can know, if I can feel that this is a good quality product that's been processed well and that's been raised well, I'll have it once in a while. So I'm not completely religious about it. However, I want to mention that none of these foods are my staples. This book talks um, a lot about how food, environment, vaccinations, um, dental care, how all of these things affect and cause a lot of these mental illnesses such as depression, anxiety, panic attacks and all of that and it's absolutely life-changing. I highly recommend it to you if you or anyone, if you're not even going through it, still read it because it's extremely educational. Another incredible book that I want to recommend to you guys um, if you're going through depression, anxiety or if someone you know is or if you're just into the subject of you know psychology and understanding human mind is this book called The Body Keeps the Score it's something I recommended I think in the summer it's probably one of the best books that has helped me understand where and why again I'm going back now to why why I was experiencing anxiety or depression in the past it definitely unleashes so many answers to so many questions and the reason to that is because the whole book and it's a long book I listened to the audiobook it's a long book it's quite deep and it's very hard to listen because you go through case studies of people who have lives definitely worse than you and I trust me you know these are people who survived wars, who got raped when they were kids, abused by their parents, abused by relatives and all these crazy horror stories and now they're depressed and anxious and they have this and that and then this MD, so it's written by a doctor, he basically tries all these things and then talks about how the stress that they these people experience, how it caused them to feel this anxiety or this depression. Again, I could talk about this book for an hour, but I'm not going to. I just recommend to read it because if you want to understand your condition or if you want to understand why people experience these things, if you want to have more compassion and if you want to be able to relate to people more, then this book will have all the answers to your questions. One last thing I'll say about this book, if you have experienced some trauma, and I know every single, almost every single one of us have experienced some trauma, whether we remember it or not some of us were too young to remember it so it went into our subconscious the title of the book basically says it all the body keeps the score so this trauma is stored somewhere in the body which causes you now to experience depression and anxiety so it is important to understand this because if you don't acknowledge this, if you just numb the pain, you will not be able to release it. And again, the book was extremely powerful in my healing because I was able to release a lot of the traumas that I forgot even, I maybe didn't even know that existed and were stored in my body. And when anxiety is stored in your body, it like literally depletes you from energy. Your heart rate is much higher, your energy, it drains your energy, your cortisol, basically your stress levels are up, it screws up with your digestion, all of these things are real and all of these things are causing and altering your way of living and being so 
I definitely recommend reading this book because it's gonna help you out and it's gonna really make a huge difference in your understanding of yourself. And the last book that I'm gonna recommend, and this is of course my favorite because it's the most practical thing, and this came out of a need to understand how I can again consistently do something that will help me be more happier and joyful every single day. When I was going through all of this, Alex and I used to do gratefulness walks. It's something we've met, Alex probably mentioned in his videos a lot. I haven't mentioned too many times. Gratefulness walks was something we got from Tony Robbins and I love Tony Robbins. Actually, he's another person who really inspired me and significantly positively inspired me in many different ways. I love his course, Get the Edge. Is it the Get the Edge? Well, it's a course that you can do. You listen to the audio and then you do certain exercises. On a side note, I definitely recommend that. But we used to do gratefulness walks and it would take us half an hour or longer. And then we realized that realistically we can't always do this, but we still wanted to do something that would have the same impact. Because when we did gratefulness walks, it had a huge effect on our lives. All of those things that we would say in the gratefulness walks would come true. Again, if you want me to do a different video on gratefulness, gratefulness walks, I could to talk more in depth of what it is, but I'm not gonna dwell into too many details right now because that's a whole separate subject. We created a short version of basically that and much more. We did a lot of research on positive psychology and what are some things that actually work. So, you know, you read a lot of self-help books, but after you read it, there's no practical advice on what to do. This is the practical advice that you can do every single day. It's sort of what we call it is the toothbrush for the mind. If you don't brush your teeth, what happens? You know, after a week, two weeks, your teeth will start, three weeks, a month, you st your teeth will start to rotten, and then you're, you're gonna have no teeth. You're gonna have to pull them out. Same thing with the mind. We don't think about that. You have to daily practice something that cleanses and clears your mind of all the garbage and all the stressors and all the things that affect our mind and our brain. So five minute journal is that tool that I use daily morning and evening. It does only take five minutes a day and that's the best part about it. And yeah, I'm not gonna go into too many details because a lot of you probably know about it, but I just thought I'd mention it because this is something that I use every single day alongside with meditation and yoga and everything else that I use. All right, this is a very long video, but again, I'm just sort of summarizing my research of six years in one video and all of these things are things that I've actually used that have actually helped me tremendously. So that's why I want to spend the time to let you know about them. And the last thing, well, not the last thing, but one of the last things I'm going to mention today, I'm holding this little pouch. Uh, basically what this is, what this is, is a tool and it's called HeartMath. It's sort of a heart variability monitoring system. I know it sounds very complicated, but you don't have to have the tool. You can buy these online. I'm going to link it down below, but what it does, what it allows you to do, and this is great for people who are super logical and they don't believe into in meditation or all those things they need to see what's going on this one is wonderful because you um, have an app and basically you do these breathing exercises and as you do them you can see your heart rate variability so you see the coherence of your heartbeat on the screen of your phone and when you stress it's red and it goes like kind of like or like all the way like kind of crazy and then as you breathe it starts turning blue like as you breathe deeper or you um, there's certain things that you do uh, certain exercises that you do you feel gratitude or you focus on positive emotions you see it's turning blue and then it's turning green and then when it's green that means you're in high coherence and high coherence is happiness is joy it's all these positive feelings that are extremely good for our bodies and you see that in the heartbeat that's the coolest thing ever with this app so again if you just want to start small like I've, I've recommended so many things right now and I just don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed I think it's important to make a list of everything that I've suggested and I'm gonna link it all down below and just start with one thing Start with one thing and do it consistently once it's consistent You can add another thing and then another thing But don't feel overwhelmed Just see what speaks to you the most and try that do that and then add another thing So hard math is definitely something I love I haven't been as consistent lately But I'm planning to start doing it consistently again because it was tremendous when I had issues with my digestion because of stress <laughs> It helped me incredibly so I definitely love this. I have this in my bag all the time, but I don't always do this regularly. And the last but not least, um, I'm going to mention something that's probably one of the most important things just in a human life is to have a purpose. And having a purpose in life can help you go through the darkest of times. And it has helped me to go through the darkest of times. I think this whole experience of going through depression and anxiety made me reevaluate my life, my friendships, everything, my purpose on this planet. Because when you have a lot of existential pain, panic attacks you're like why am I here what is the purpose of all of this it made me realize that you know 
I'm getting emotional again. You know, I'm here to do my best and I'm here to, to be playful and happy and, and mainly just to do my best and to follow my heart and to be kind to others, but mainly to be kind to myself because I think the most important thing that we can do is to establish a better relationship here inside. When you establish peace, when you establish love, when you establish kindness here, you cannot act any other way to the outside world. And I think that is truly the purpose anyways for me. And then to share that with the world. So when you do the internal work, it's not selfish. In our society, it's looked at, oh, you know, that person is so self-indulgent. But in fact, if you're empty, you will have nothing to give. So I think it's very important that we take time to heal ourselves, to listen to ourselves, to create space to be with ourselves, because then we'll have so much more to give to the world. But I think the purpose part is gonna be very different for every single one of us. If having a purpose and defining your purpose can be extremely life-changing and healing. And out of everything that I said, this is definitely one of the most important things. It's one of the greatest books I've read also, called Man's Search for Meaning um, by Dr. Wink, Victor Frank. Frankl and he went through Holocaust, I mean, incredible man, incredible story, read the book, it's tiny. And he says, when a person has a why, like a why to live, he can go through any, anything, basically. He can go through Holocaust, that's the worst of the experiences you can imagine as a human being. So um, have a why, why are you here? And I think it's important not to look at other people's why, that's why I'm not gonna go into detail into in my why, because it doesn't matter what my why is what matters is what's your why why are you here what's the ultimate purpose of why you're here so that's definitely something an exercise for you as well to do and one last thing I'm gonna say in this video because I think I'm almost finished is that life ain't perfect <laughs> so even if you do all these things and after you've done all of these things sometimes emotions happen and emotions are part of life and you know, once in a while I still experience anxiety and that's okay because to me again, it's just a signal that, hey Mimi, you're overworking, you stop meditating, you're doing something that's not affecting your body in a positive way. It's just like, hey, little wake up calls and now I pay attention. I don't allow it to escalate. If I notice it, I say, okay, what's going on? Have some space and then make the change and really be in tune and aware to your body because all of these things are there to signify something to you and to make you wake up to reality. That's all I have to say today. I think one of the most important things to understand in all of this video is that whatever you're going through today, don't believe that your reality today defines your future. You could be in the worst part, in the darkest of places today, but as long as you have hope and faith, believe me, you will get through it. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's just a matter of having the will and not giving up and persevering. I know that in my darkest of moments, I just remember thinking, I'm not gonna give up, I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to get out of this dark hole. And I think it's just an attitude to have, regardless of what you're going through in life. I love you guys very, very much. I put my heart and soul into this video and and I, I just, I'm really grateful and happy to have been able to share this experience with you. Thank you so much for your time, for listening, for watching. Uh, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Make sure to share it with your family and friends or anyone that you believe can benefit from this information. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!